All right, well, welcome everybody. Um, we're part of Ready, Set, Gold. My name is Holly McPeak. I am a three-time Olympian in the sport of beach volleyball. This is Nicole Branna. She is an Olympian in the sport of beach volleyball as well. And we're gonna tell you some of the lessons that we learned being athletes. So not specific to our sport, but some of the lessons we learned along the way that we think are beneficial to anybody in any field in following what you wanna do, your dreams. What we learned in our sport applies to everyday life as people as well. So just taking those lessons that we learned through teammates, friendships, travel, and applying it to what we're doing now. And and being passionate about it. So we're gonna start with one is, what's your passion? Find your passion. For me, I have a twin brother and a younger sister. I love sports. I played every sport uh, with my twin brother, everybody. So sports were my passion from a, an early age. But as I got older, I really started to focus. I played soccer and softball and baseball and football with the boys, everything. But I started to figure out that volleyball was my passion. But there's a little challenge. I don't know if you guys notice, I'm, I'm a little bit short in, the, in terms of the volleyball world. So I had to figure out, okay, my passion is volleyball, but how can I be great at it? So I set goals. I went to the gym, I was in the gym, I was doing jump workouts, I was doing whatever it took. I was able to earn a scholarship. I went to Berkeley and UCLA. And then after that, my goals became bigger and bigger because I wanted to play professionally. I wanted to be an Olympian. So whatever field, whatever your passion is, don't forget that setting goals is a really important part of the journey. And, and for me, the first part of the journey. I remember when I was six years old, I met an Olympian, Matt Biondi, who was a very decorated swimming, probably the Michael Phelps of, maybe you guys know that name, but um, I met him and he handed out Olympic pins at our swim practice and I just remember thinking how cool it was that he followed his dreams and made it to the, the top, the best that he could do. And I carried that pin around with me when I went to Beijing Olympics in 2008. Along the whole Olympic journey, qualifying and everything kept it in my bag and actually Matt Biondi was at the Olympics in 2008 commentating for USA Swimming so it was just really cool to have that moment come together about thinking when I was a young girl looking up to him and wanting to be an Olympian, whether it would happen or not one day, I didn't know, but I knew that that was a dream I had. And I think we all have different dreams that we want to go for. And sometimes we think, oh my goodness, that's crazy, but why not go for it? One of the lessons that we learned that's really important is grit. Grit is, is facing a challenge and overcoming it. Like I had tons of challenges. I had a partner that was injured in the 96 Olympics, a partner that was injured in the 2000 Olympics. I had all sorts of hurdles to overcome, but I knew what I wanted to achieve. A lot of people said I would never win a tournament and I was able to win 72. So if you think about grit in your life, right? You can put that towards anything. You stumble in a class, you, you struggle with a, a certain teacher. You got to figure out how to make it work. So grit is really important. It's one of the most important characteristics that bosses and managers and CEOs of companies say they look for when they're trying to hire. I'll tell you right, I'm a coach and I look for kids that are gritty. If they're not, as soon as things get tough, people fall apart. You want people who are gonna survive, who are gonna fight and, and not lose that will. And along those lines, another great quality I think that we learned is being coachable knowing that you can accept some criticism from people, you don't take it personal, it's not that they don't like you, it's that people want you to be better, whether it's a coach, a teacher, a parent, a friend, that we're able to take information in and get better from it and not get down and think, oh, I'm not good at that. No, it's how can I learn and how can I make myself better, whether it's on the sand, in the classroom, cooking, doing an instrument, whatever it is, but being open to that. The last thing is we're all on a journey, right? It could be a very long journey. It could be a, a short journey and then we move on to another. But the journey is really important. And it, I won a bronze medal in, in Athens. And on the back of my medal, it said, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. So all the things that happen, the heartbreak, the, the championships, the, you know, all the stumbles, all the incredible trips and memories, those are part of my journey. And those are so much bigger than the, my medal that sits at my house. Part of my journey is I learned not to compare my path to anybody else's. Somebody can be, I remember a girl in high school, 
she got all the attention. She was on the cover of a magazine and I was good, but she, everyone's like giving her all the attention. And then when we went to college, she never got better and I went right by her. We were on different paths, different speeds uh, of trajectory. So don't compare yourself to others because comparison is the thief of joy. In, enjoy your journey and where you are and just keep moving. Stay focused on your goals. And I agree with Holly about our journeys and what we're doing. And also don't forget to lean on your support system, whoever that is, family, friends. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. You're having a bad day. Some days I didn't want to get up and go practice for sure, but I knew that my teammate was counting on me to be there. And I knew that I needed to give whatever I could that day to make it the best practice I could because I didn't want to have any regrets. And I think that throughout my journey, it's I walked through some doors that were scary and challenging and I wasn't sure if I should or not, but I knew that if I didn't do it, I would always wonder. And again, it doesn't have to be sports. Whatever your passion is, that's what you want to do. You still can apply all those concepts. And getting outside your comfort zone is the best thing for growth. It's very uncomfortable and hard, but you can grow by learning new things, exposing yourself to new things. So thank you guys for coming today. Thank you for being a part of it. If you guys have questions for us after, please feel free. We're gonna show you some exercises that we like to do to get loose, to stretch, to add a little fun to the game of volleyball. All you need is a ball and a friend. We hope you enjoy it. We like to do a little dynamic warm up before we start with the ball. So this is what it looks like. We're gonna start with the world's greatest stretch. Next, we're gonna do a little short sprint to get those legs going, run forward, and back pedal back to our coats. Twice. Two times. All right, next, same thing, sprint to the cone. Two block jumps, load those legs, go up two times, and then we're gonna come back to the cone. Two rounds through. shuffle to the cone, down block jump, slide back, block jump, and do that two times through. You ready? All right, this one is gonna take a little bit of skill here. Each partner is gonna be on opposite cones, and you're gonna toss the ball in front of you to the other cone, and your partner's gonna switch, so you're kind of like a little yo-yo, back and forth. Take a look at this drill, we're gonna do it 10 reps. So just catching it, and then moving those legs to keep them warm. Woo! All right, next we're gonna get those shoulders warm, so we're gonna do some swings with our partner, tossing the ball up with two hands, and a nice medium swing right at our partner's belly button to get those shoulders going. Another thing with those arm swings is we want to have good hand contact on the ball. We want to get some top spin on it. So make sure you're getting a good contact, palm on the ball, wrapping that hand around it. Finish that swing. And also if you're right-handed, you want to have a step with your left foot forward. If you're left-handed, take a step as you're hitting with the right foot. Next, we're gonna do a little passing. We're gonna have Holly McPeak, one of the all-time best defenders ever, come in for short ball and then shuffle back, sliding her feet back to get the deep ball. Do 10 reps all together, short and deep, alternating, short. Watch her platform, nice and out. She makes the pass. Getting under that ball so we can lift it up for our setter. Nice, Holly, good. Handled that, no problem. All right, next we're gonna pass side to side. Holly's gonna shuffle from one cone to the other, and I'm gonna toss in front of her. Remember to keep those legs shoulder width apart, 
lifting that bump up so our setter has a nice apex to get under it. And watch my platform. A lot of people make the mistake of doing this. You don't do this. It doesn't come past here. You lift with your legs. Nice. Keeping that ball in front of her belly button. Last one. Nice. Good job. All right, next drill is you're going to pass to yourself, sit to your partner. So let's get those hands out and practice using a nice, nice platform to lift the ball up with some height so you can get under it and then set it back to your partner. Nice job. Holly, that was a great workout. We hope you enjoyed it and had a lot of fun. I know we love sharing it with you guys. Thank you to our sponsor, Foundation for Global Sports Development and Sidewinder Films.